I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we had a question. This is a pretty easy one as to what months are the best ones to come and visit Nicaragua, presumably as a tourist. You want to come spend some time in paradise. When's the best time to do it? Because here in the tropics, our weather and climate are a bit different than you might expect if you're coming from North America or Europe. We're just on a different cycle, and you can't just look at where we are relative to the equator to really have a good idea about what that's like. So we're going to give you some advice on when you may want to come here to Nicaragua to visit right after the bump. Nicaragua is a tropical country and we lie just a little bit north of the equator, so we're in a very warm zone. But more importantly, the tropics do not experience climate change in the way that most of the world does. The majority of people who are looking at visiting Nicaragua and the majority of the world's population sit in a temperate zone, that is the subtropics and farther north. That zone is normally experiencing four complete seasons, winter, summer, spring, and fall. They're relatively discreet, and with rare exception, they tend to be driven by the sun cycle. Long solar days produce the summer, short ones produce the winter, the transition zones, spring and fall, of course. And we have equinoxes and uh, solstices that mark the beginning and ends of the different cycles. And while that may not exactly coincide to the warm and cold days, it's pretty close, and you can uh, look at your longest, like all kinds of things track by the sun. So if you're coming from a temperate zone, which the vast majority of the world's population is, that's what you're going to be used to, and it's hard to then apply that experience to the tropics in general. Those who live in the temperate zone are generally aware that if you go to the southern hemisphere to South America, Southern Africa, Australia, that you're going to go back to that temperate zone and simply flip it. What is summer in the north becomes winter in the south. Uh, and so you could go back and forth and snowbird that way uh, by always being in summer, for example, six months of the year in one, six months of the year in the other, and you'd still have spring and fall. You would just switch whether you're heading up or down, depending on where you go at the different times. So that's mirrored. And the majority of the population in the southern hemisphere lives in the temperate zone there as well, even though the majority of the Southern Hemisphere isn't in physically in the temperate zone, but the big cities mostly are. And the reason is, is that the temperate zone is just a really easy, great place to have large populations, right? It tends to support large populations very well. And in the Northern Hemisphere, almost all of the land mass falls within the temperate zone, so that also makes it very popular. The tropics actually doesn't have that much land, especially in the New World. The amount of physical land that falls within the tropics is pretty small, with a lot of it being in the Southern Caribbean, here in Central America, or the northern portion of South America, with the majority of that being in Brazil. If you're in the tropics, that four-season system basically fades away, and it's why the tropics are the tropics. That region is the, the seasonless zone. It's not exactly that there are no seasons. It's not like you step over the, the uh, Tropic of Cancer, I believe it is, and, and suddenly have no seasons whatsoever, and on the other line you do, but it's more like that than it's not. It's surprising how quickly you go from a full seasonal change. And I realize those of you who live in like Miami uh, or in Houston um, are used to relatively small change. But even if you live in Miami or Houston, you certainly know when it's winter versus summer. Spring and fall start to start to get a little bit soft. And you're like, well, we just barely have them. Whereas if you're in, say, a New York or Wisconsin and Oregon, your spring and fall are clear. They're big, full seasons. Uh, so that does change a little bit. But but it's relatively minor, but you cross that line into the real tropics and suddenly those seasons drop away rapidly. And the tropical zone is basically one long climactic season, at least from a temperature perspective and mostly from a sunlight perspective. Obviously, you can measure how much sunlight we have day to day, the same as anywhere else, except for right on the equator, it suddenly becomes even. But those, as you get closer to the equator, that just gets a smaller and smaller dynamic range on the length of days over time. So we are less affected by that than other regions, but it still does happen, of course. So what is our, our climatic situation here? Well, we have uh, even temperatures year round, essentially, technically, the Northern Hemisphere winter, which we don't call, we call it summer here, is just the slightest bit cooler than the North American uh, summer, which we call winter here very confusing. That 
uh, is a tiny variation though. You essentially don't notice. Now I'm recording this on a cloudy day, so it's actually very pleasant and cool today, but it's, it's only because of cloud cover. Uh, the actual air temperature is roughly the same almost every day, and I'm here in what we would consider one of our hottest time periods on average. So what we do have here though is, and very importantly, we've done a number of episodes on this, so it should be as a surprise to very few people, but we have a rainy season and a dry season. The dry season is just a touch cooler, but the rainy season has the cooling rains and so often is perceived as being cooler. It's almost six of one half dozen of the other. The bigger thing, the only thing you really need to worry about from a weather perspective is do you want rain or do you want dry? that's it. And maybe you want both. And so you want to come during a transition time, which is not very long. We basically go from no rain to rain pretty quickly. Now we have had a couple minutes of rain over the last few weeks. We're still in the dry season, but it's really just a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes total over the last two weeks. And as you can see, we were cloud covered for a minute, but now we're bright again and we have no sign of rain. We're not expecting any uh, for at least the next several days as far out as the forecast goes. <clears throat> This is the biggest determining factor. Now, we're talking about months. So before we get into your decision on what months to come, there is one month in which we always say, seriously consider not coming, and that is April. Right now, we're in April as we're doing this recording. I'm a few days behind on the show, so it's gonna look like I recorded a couple days ago, but it is April when I'm recording this, and April is generally considered the most unpleasant month in Nicaragua, mostly because the wind dies down, and for there's some factors in society as well because of the Holy Week ending, so people are just tired of going out, so everything kind of drags to a halt. Everyone who's gonna do um, maintenance on hotels or restaurants, they all do it during this month. It's when the whole culture just takes a break after going out a lot. Suddenly they go out very little, but it's also because this is the worst weather generally throughout the year. It is sunny, it is hot, the wind dies down, we are dry because we haven't had rain for months, and we're ready for the rains to come. And they're coming soon, and we have a few drops, but the ground around me, the trees, everything's starting to look very dry and unhappy. And it'll get that way until those first couple days of rains. And two things happen with those first days of rain. One is everything suddenly starts becoming green again, but it takes a few days for all the plants to suck up that water. But the other is that leading up to that, we generally have the Saharan dust. This is, we get dust clouds blowing in from North Africa and they, they hang in the air and it gets really dry and dusty and we don't really like it. Uh, but these few weeks, we haven't really seen it yet. The sky hasn't turned yellow yet, but just before it starts raining, that typically happens. And then those first rains rains are like mud falling from the sky, and so you want a day or two of good solid rains before you really start hanging out in the rain, because it clears out the sky. And after that, we're crystal clear, and it's and it's all healthy dust. It's not pollution. It is healthy dust, and it comes down, and it gives us nutrients, and it helps create the rainforest here, just like it does in the Amazon. So it's really important for us. It's what makes us such a fertile country, so we really appreciate it. And it does make for some beautiful skies right when before that happens. But those first few days of rain, they are quite dirty, and uh, you'd like to avoid that. So April, generally you're going to avoid, but this is important. It's not that big of a deal. It's okay to come in April. So many people want to, and it is when, when tourism is at its lowest and the locals go out the least. So if you're looking for that time to come out and, and just you know be able to go places with no other tourists, it's your best chance. You will, however, find more tourists than locals going out, simply because many tourists are like, I didn't know anything about April, and the locals are like, don't go anywhere in April. After that, other than April, the other 11 months of the year are roughly equal with six of them being rainy and five of the remaining ones being dry. It's six and six, but April's a dry month. If you want to be here for the rain, and I love big tropical rainstorms, they're a lot of fun and they don't go all day long. If you want to experience that, then come during the rainy season. And as I say, and every time we talk about this, if you come during the rainy season, be prepared that the rain is going to disrupt your travels. It's gonna to have to schedule your day around it. You're gonna to have to be prepared. You don't wanna drive during those big rainstorms. If you come during the dry season, be prepared. It's gonna be very dry. There isn't as much water. You don't get that cool, interesting big storms, but you can do your activities all day, every day, and you don't have to schedule around the weather at all because it basically doesn't change. You have a little bit of wind to a little bit more wind, and that's about it. So every day is sunny and bright like it is right this moment, and it's rare that you're even gonna get cloud cover. Man, when you do get cloud cover, that never really disrupts anything. You just say, wow, I'm really thankful there's some cloud cover because Nicaragua is a very hot country, and the cloud cover is a little bit of a bonus, and it makes everything 
just a little bit more color saturated and beautiful. And we love our cloudy days because they're the rarity here. The bright sun is our normal almost every day. Even during the rainy season, we get loads and loads of sunlight and then the storms roll in in the afternoons, disrupt everything, everyone hides because it's you don't want to drive in that, you don't want to be out in it. Sometimes it's even dangerous. Uh, and then as soon as it stops, then you can go out because generally it's just 15 minutes to maybe three hours normally in the late afternoon to early evening it comes down off the mountains like there's a whole weather pattern that creates it and that's how the day goes so even during the rain there's a lot of people who choose the rainy season because they prefer that as the time to be here but it is the low season if such a thing exists it's just a little bit lower than the high season and then the dry season is the high season it has just a little bit more tourism but it also has a little bit more time to go out and do things so uh, it really is up to you do you want to be here for the rain will it affect your plans or do you just want to hang out and enjoy the area then the rainy season might be better i would prefer it personally but only preferred by a little bit and if you want to be able to come in and do a quick vacation and, and squeeze in a lot of things and never have to worry about being disrupted by the weather, then you're going to want to be here for the dry season. Other than that, you can really come anytime. It doesn't really matter. We don't have good seasons and bad seasons. We don't have specific times to be here and not. There are, of course, like coming for Christmas, things will be busy because people travel at Christmas and they're busy doing things and they want to spend time with family. So it's a little bit harder to be a tourist then, but maybe it's when you have time off, it's not a problem. Holy Week, uh, Samana Santa, basically the week leading up to Easter, that is insane here. If you want to experience that, then you have to come then. If you want to experience anything else, then you probably want to avoid then, but that's the week before April in most cases. So it's just part of the April kind of avoided. The last few days of April are generally okay. It's actually like the last week of March through the last week of April uh, or up to the last week of April is kind of the shift. It's not exactly the month of April that you want to avoid. But really, you really can. It's the tropics. That's one of the beauties of the tropics is you really can come year round. It's not like Europe where the summer gets outrageously hot and you can't handle it. We don't get as hot as Italy or Spain anymore. We, we used to be hotter than them all the time, but now the summers in Southern Europe are hotter than this entire region, even cities like Leon and Chinandega. So for a lot of you who vacation in the summer, this is actually more pleasant than a lot of the traditional, very mild locations because Spain and Italy are in line with places like Washington, DC. You would never guess that they would get that hot in the summer anymore, especially in mild Europe, but Europe is no longer that mild. And in the winter, we remain just as warm and beautiful as we do the other times of the year, but much of Europe is under snow. And so beautiful locations like Europe have really strong high seasons and low seasons as to when you want to be there and shoulder seasons and all these complex things. We don't have that. You can come to anywhere in the tropics, any time of the year, and it's going to be just fine. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps make this show possible. I really appreciate everyone who helps out with that. It really does make a difference. I know it doesn't seem like much, but you guys really do make this possible. If you would take a moment and post this episode somewhere on social media, on the Reddit groups, on a Facebook group, anything like that, I'd really appreciate it. That really does help get the word out there, tells the algorithm that people are talking about the show. It leads people to it. They know that. Uh, if just tell a friend about the show, get them to come watch it. And greetings to, I know I've got some people who discovered me in person and are like checking out the show because they, they found me in meetings yesterday. So welcome to them. And uh, as always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And I will probably not get these up before the majority of you see it, but at some point there will be four episodes that pop up on a majority of devices. Click on one of those to tell the algorithm that you love the show, or just find another one of my episodes somehow and click on that.